When someone has a passion for what they do, it comes through in the product they provide their customers. Just ask LaRocca's Pizza's new owner, Jason Johnson, about their crust. They make it every day and let it rise for a minimum of 24 hours before they use it for their pizza. And his staff doesn't want to do anything they won't be the best at. And you can taste it in their pizza. LaRocca's Pizza, just a half block north of the I-470 Engage Boulevard exit. Come taste the difference. It's the season for brand new mulch, and Brown's Tree Service has got your yard covered. Brown's Tree Service utilizes hardwood mulch that retains more moisture. Not only does mulch make your yard more appealing, it also reduces weeds, improves soil, and creates insulation for plants. Get the right mulch for your job at Brown's Tree Service. They shred it, haul it, and spread it in bulk. Or you can haul it yourself for the personal touch to your property. Call Brown's Tree Service at 75-379-9212 or visit online at brownstreeservicelc.com. Com. It's time for Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Preferred Advisors. Good Saturday morning to you. This is Carrie Brown, Associate Broker with EXP Realty and the Preferred Advisors team, and you're listening to Real Estate 101. And so Broderick J. Rowe has been my guest host for the month of February, and we just realized that this is leap year. So he is with me for one more Saturday. Good morning, Broderick. How are you? Good morning, Carrie. Happy, uh, happy leap year. We are going to be talking about a little bit of everything today. Um, I know we've talked a lot about um, equity trading and investments, so we're going to shake it up a bit. Um, Broderick, again, he is with ERA. Um, He's a broker owner out of Wichita. Um, Again, competing brokerage, but he and I have been buds for years, and we don't care. So... That's right. We we, we play play nice together in the sandbox and even refer business back and forth. We do all the time. Speaking of which, I actually got one today I need to send you. Um, Okay, so we're going to talk about things that affect you as homeowners. First off, we're going to start with Craigslist scams. I'll give you a a brief scenario, and Broderick can give you his, too. Um, Craigslist, whenever we list a property, we do put ours on Craigslist. For a long time, we stopped, but we figured that that was costing our sellers, buyers, and so we started doing it again, but we're very specific about our wording. Um, people from overseas and possibly inside the United States take your listings and they try and make them look like rentals and they try to bribe money out of people by saying that they're rentals. Thank goodness. Most of the time people are smart. They get there, they call the agent's name on the sign. Um, but they are trying to get that first month's deposit. They make up all these stories about how to get the keys, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff. Um, Roderick, what's been your experience? Yeah, I, exactly what you just mentioned, Carrie. Uh, I would I would just recommend to the public that they use Craigslist as a medium to see what's available, but don't. If it gives you an address, they, you know, respond and look for a sign and, and, and actually make contact with the agent. My experience is exactly uh, what you said on a, on a bunch of different levels. People saying the property is about to lease, will lease to you for whatever reason, and they'll give a ridiculously low rental amount and want you to Western Union that money to them immediately. And then the agent on the sign will bring you a key. Well, they're just stealing seven or eight hundred dollars when that property should be renting for twelve or fifteen hundred dollars. If it's too good, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Absolutely, uh, communicate. Communicate with the broker on that sign. And in some cases, and I'm sure you've seen this too, the property's not for sale or rent. It's an old listing that they've collected that on. So, I never heard buyer beware. Yeah. Knock on the door. Yeah. Knock on the door and ask the people living there. (laughs) We've seen them uh, use Craigslist uh, ads to uh, lease properties that were really only offered for sale at, at those great discounts. And we've seen them. For some reason, I'm not for sure why, they'll actually coordinate with the contractor to paint the house. Oh, and wow. The painter, shows up and the painter shows up and tries to get paid. And we're like, well, wait a second, you painted, that's, who are you, what? <laughs> so, We've uh, actually I'm not seen... sure how they, I don't know how they make money on that, but it's a horrible way for the community at large to be bamboozled and lose money. Absolutely. And we've seen, even with my husband's tree service, we've had random people call to have a tree removed who didn't even live in the neighborhood. 
And so my husband at this point has, you know, he gets their mailing address and everything and he'll call me and we'll coordinate whether or not that that, you know, if that address is even real or if the people own it. Um, it's, it's crazy. You almost have to be a detective in this industry. Um, you, you, you do, unfortunately, the, the things that make it easy to communicate in this modern era also, uh, make it, uh, uh, make you vulnerable. Which brings us to wiring fraud. I don't know if you read this, but Barbara Corcoran endorses me, and I saw today I was reading it, um, and she got taken for four hundred thousand um, dollars. Wow! She owns a lot of rental properties. Got a deal saying a renovation deal had been done, and that the contractors were ready to be paid. Her secretary sent it over to a bookkeeper. Bookkeeper says, "Oh yeah, she owns all these properties. Paid it, and she just lost four hundred thousand dollars." Wiring sure. fraud is real. It is. It is real. We've seen it in Topeka and in Wichita, and you know throughout the uh, the Midwest and all over the country. But those are some of the scarier local stories I've heard, where um, uh, purchase prices of eighty to three hundred thousand dollars have been wired in advance of the closing, uh, and didn't go to the security company, even though or the, the the title company, even though a very convincing email led them to believe otherwise. Yeah, and we've had it happen in Topeka. One family, um, I believe it was right at $90,000, lost money, um, called. And I tell people this, and this is actually the reason why I don't put sold or under contract writers on a house unless I have no other option. Like, say, for instance, we've scheduled an open house, and we went under contract prior to that open house just so that people know whenever they come and there's nobody there. Um, that's really the only time I'll do it. And the reason why... It would be amazing advertising for us because a lot of the times we sell pretty quick. But if you see a solder and under contract sign and you drive by and you're one of these people doing this, they'll just call you up. They'll say, hey, I'm such and such from the title company. They don't ever say which one. And um, I need to verify your routing number so that we can make sure that you get your funds from closing. People are falling for this. And that is the reason why, and also the reason why I won't put the solder under contract. That way they don't know that it's sold, um, and they don't have a reason to call you. Extra, yeah, just every everything you can do to, to keep the buyers and sellers safe. And, it's, it, and it is buyers and sellers, because as a seller, where do you want your funds wired? As a buyer, where do we wire the funds for uh, for the purchase? And um, The ones that I'm familiar with that I've read cases on and we, uh, of course, we communicate and we train with the title companies regularly. Is uh, they will send a an email. They gained access to somebody's email address, whether it's uh, online media or through phishing scams, and uh, they started a conversation. And these emails look very convincing. They look like they're from the title company. They look like they're from a real estate uh, company or a real estate brokerage. And they'll change just one word, or they'll change one one space, or put a dash in, and but everything else looks the same. Uh, I tell my buyers and sellers, uh, first of all, we have them sign a disclosure that says this is a real thing. It's out here. It's bad. Uh, be aware of it. Pay attention, and don't respond with any pertinent information in your emails. I ask I ask my clients to communicate directly with the title company. Make a phone call, call me. If they have the luxury and they're an in-town buyer and seller, then let's stop by the title company. Just just to put that extra layer in there. That's not always possible, but so many of these title companies will have real high-end encrypted um, communications where you've got to log on and do certain things, and that helps protect against that. But there's no there's no hundred percent out there. Just be be very careful because. Uh, some of these figures are just like you said, Barbara Corkin, four hundred thousand dollars. They're they're uh, they'll make you sick to think about that much money just vanishing. Absolutely, and I do the same thing. We schedule with our sellers to go and meet and do a dry closing with the title company, so that all of their documentation stays in house. We never mail it or email it, um, and we do have um, a server that we send everything through that has password protected and has multiple layers to where it's not just something that's just going to show up in their email um, and not be protected. 
But even still, if I can get you there in person, that's what I want to do. It's an extra step, but it also gives you a chance to spend time with your client and buy them lunch. So our next topic of conversation was tips on making sure that your house is ready for a competitive market. So, Broderick, I believe yours is actually more competitive than, than mine, so I want to hear your tips first. Well, it's, it's crazy fast. We, we will sit down and, and, and have an initial consultation with our, with our sellers when we're going through the information and the market data that supports a sell price. First of all, we try to tell them, you know, price it right, not too high, not too low, but price it right for your market. And we want them and we counsel them to put the house in what, what I call good repair or eliminating any deferred maintenance. Um, you never, and this is one of my buyer agents says this all the time, you never get a second chance to make a first impression because it is competitive and you do want to get top dollar in the shortest amount of time. Um, take care of the carpet stains. Take care of the paint. Take care of the thresholds, uh, the handrails, um, things that you would expect to see in a, in a market-ready house will get the most amount of money for your clients. And uh, that's where I counsel them. Um, I've got a little formula I use, and it's not, it's not perfect. It's not scientific. I did, I did some hillbilly math to come up with this, but <laughs> for every dollar of deferred maintenance uh, that a potential buyer sees, it'll cost you $3 in an offer price. So if that's a $5,000 uh, mechanical unit or heating and air unit on the house, it could be a $15,000 offer if it just doesn't work or it's not there. So it really it really adds up when you start uh, multiplying it like that. Absolutely. And unfortunately, and I am notorious for pricing a little bit on the high side, and I only do that based on what I can get inside the parameters of my comps. Um, every once in a while, I'll push it just slightly above just to see. But the biggest thing to understand is if you stay overpriced for too long, you get the stigma of what's wrong with your house. Why isn't it sold? The other thing you, is... You, you do. You absolutely do. And um, I've got one right now, that uh, actually two, that there's absolutely nothing wrong with. It's just, you know, they had been previously listed higher. And whenever we listed it, we kind of tried to stay close to that price. Now we're in a price range where it should be a steal. And people have dubbed it as something must be wrong. And then they come in to an open house and they're like, oh, my gosh, this place is gorgeous. Um, So it's a double-edged sword. You know, try and we want to get you the most money possible. And, I mean, just this week we sold two over what anybody else said that they could get. So I pride myself in getting my sellers as much as I can get them. But I don't want to get them that stigma. That's true. You do, And you do a really good job. You've got a good reputation. Uh, in your in your community and in your market, and, but wow, that first two to three weeks is so critical, and and with with the perception, I mean, I have uh, sellers all the time ask, hey, um, let's start high and then we can take offers, or if you start too high, it, your house just isn't showing up on the searches, and for no other reason than it's just not present in that market at that price range. It, it burns days on market, and those those first 14 to 21 days are very, very crucial. Right. It is definitely not an exact science, and it's a very, very fine line on whether or not you're getting the most money possible for your sellers. You really don't want to leave money on the table and running the risk of giving them a stigma. Um, the other thing about that is, is every 30 days, at a minimum, you need to be doing a price reduction. The reason why is because it goes into what we call the internet black hole. When, and, and I always joke, but agents are lazy. Um, they set people up on automated drips. Well, when they do that, let's just say that they get 50 houses to look at. They are at work. They don't get back to it. They miss it. They think, oh, well, I don't like that front color. You know, they're a little pickier when they first start looking at homes. And they didn't really give it a good shake that first time. Well, they're not going to see you again unless they're purposely searching, their agent goes out and looks at it and says, hey, this is perfect for you, or you do a price reduction. They're not going to show back up in their email again. Um, And that is the perfect reason to do one. And I don't say you need to do like a $10,000 reduction unless you're grossly overpriced. What I'm saying is you need to do some sort of price reduction every 30 days. 
I, true, true story. You, yeah. you do need that. You do need that motion. Yeah, just to just to stay relevant. You know, if you haven't sold already, um, and it's unfortunate. I have that very same conversation every time I list a house, and it you know you know it's sinking in. But when it comes time to do the price reduction, they don't always want to. But I, I'm proud. I can tell you without a doubt, over and over and over, I see it. As soon as we do a price reduction, now we're getting offers. So it's really important to do it. It is. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, I don't think your market is a lot different than ours, but uh, it is uh, it is very important. This is the largest transaction uh, buyers and sellers typically are going to do in their life. And they may only move two or three times in their entire life. So Absolutely. we really want to take care of them and, and bring all these tools to bear to, to benefit them. Absolutely. We're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. And we're going to talk about how to decide who to pick for an agent. Southwest Topeka has a good neighbor. State Farm agent Jim Garrison, now at 29th and Urish. If your current insurance situation has you going around in circles, get off the roundabout and stop in and meet Jim and his wonderfully efficient staff. Let Jim Garrison give you a quote and make the Garrison comparison. He's confident that with State Farm's competitive rates, the right coverage, and his unmatched service, you'll want to make him your new insurance agent. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Jim Garrison is there for you, northeast of the roundabout at 29th and Urish. When someone has a passion for what they do, it comes through in the product they provide their customers. Just ask LaRocca's Pizza's new owner, Jason Johnson, about their crust. They make it every day and let it rise for a minimum of 24 hours before they use it for their pizza. And his staff doesn't want to do anything they won't be the best at. And you can taste it in their pizza. LaRocca's Pizza, just a half block north of the I-470 Engage Boulevard exit. Come taste the difference. At SportsMomsUnited.com, we celebrate every athlete and support every sports mom. SportsMomsUnited.com is on a mission to put logic back in youth sports. When you ask young athletes why they play sports, their number one answer is fun. For them, that means being on a team, making new friends, having a good time, all of which are awesome memories. We add to the memories by featuring an athlete of the day and sharing their story. Nominate an athlete today at www.SportsMomsUnited.com. Thanks for joining us again. This is Carrie Brown, Associate Broker with EXP Realty and the Preferred Advisors team. And I am back with Broderick J. Rowe with ERA. He's a broker owner out of Wichita. And um, before the break, I mentioned that we are going to be discussing how to pick who to use as an agent. So, Broderick, I'll let you start. Let me start. Okay. Uh, walk into this thing. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would tell you, pick somebody that you get along with. And, you know, interview them and make sure that you you click. And uh, my case, uh, before I was licensed, my wife and I interviewed a couple of agents, and we we basically had to like them. She had to like them. And uh, I had to be okay with it. So um, <laughs> that's kind of funny, but not really. It's, that's more, more real than not. But uh, pick somebody that's going to communicate well and, and pay attention to what you want and need. And, uh, you know, it's a relationship. Um not uh, not every uh, buyer or seller are going to work good with every uh, uh, real estate uh, professional. Absolutely. The other thing is, whenever they come to the table, are they prepared? Um, usually, and I hear this a lot because we're very detail-oriented in our presentation. We break down exactly what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, what you're going to hear, what you're going to see. And we put together our comps and our net sheets, so there is no vague anything. Um, I'm a very literal-minded person, and I I have to know. And so, obviously, I feel like everybody else should. Um, and I, I hear this a lot. Well, my agent just showed up with a couple of sheets from the MLS, and that's how they priced my house. Um, and that, um, I mean, we cannot pretend to be appraisers, but there are definitely mathematical equations that are out there that could get to be a little bit more detailed and um i for for years um bob hannigan would check me if we had a deal that we both landed on and he'll say okay where did you end up and when we got to be anywhere from a thousand to five thousand dollars apart he said okay you're 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 right in there with the appraisers we could land anywhere from a thousand to five thousand dollars apart and he said and we're getting there consecutively so it worked out really well that I got to have that kind of mentorship um, with him kind of just training me along. 
Um, and I, to this day, I still use the equations. They just change just slightly depending on the market. Um, but having an agent come prepared, not just sliding a couple of sheets at you and saying, okay, this is what I think. They need to, to show you, okay, how am I going to market? Everybody's on the MLS, so that doesn't really count. Are they on more than one? How are they getting out there? You know, what are their pictures going to look like? Really have them break it down because marketing is everything. That's how people know that your house is even out there. It is. And and just uh, a few short years ago, professional pictures were that high-end luxury item. Now they're the standard. Um, You know, everybody's on hundreds of websites. Uh, what are they? What are the extra pieces they're doing? So, uh, you know, uh, align yourself with an agent that you know uh, you can get along with. I always see my my dad always said, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. So, uh, as agents, we uh, we uh, have the gift of gab, and we we like talking to people, uh, and so we have to be very intentional about being on time. Everybody's going to be you know late from time to time. They might have a flat tire, but. You know, they're like two or three times in a row. Uh, that doesn't work in our world. It's uh, We have to be respectful of our clients' time and uh, have to be intentional about our approach to uh, to serve them. Absolutely. And I was raised the same way. So I, for the most part, I'm always early. Um, unless, of course, I get caught up and it's not in my control. But me arriving on time makes me anxious. So, um Okay, so picking between between a team versus an independent agent, what's your take on that? Well, I, I can make a case for both. Uh, if you've if you've got an agent that does uh, you know uh, twenty transactions a year and they work independently, but with the support of uh, the firm, uh, that can be a good fit. Um, if you uh, want to go with a, a higher producing t- uh, individual in this line of work. And they work in a team. A well-organized team can be a huge complement and give you lots of resources and assets. So, uh, I, I, I broker and I manage uh, both scenarios in our in our office. And uh, a well-organized team that has a file processor and a shipping specialist and a contract specialist and a closing specialist uh, can be a very huge advantage uh, for uh, both the buyers and the sellers. Um, So it really depends on what your taste is and uh, what your needs are and your time frame. If you're going to be a remote buyer, and we're seeing this a lot, people literally uh, video chatting on the phone and touring properties and closing on the inside and seeing, then uh, your needs are going to be different than somebody that's local and only has weekends or evenings to show. So, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of both depending on what the needs of the consumer are. I agree. Um, I would say to me on, on the negative side of being an individual agent, just because I know when I started out, that's what I did. Um, again, if they have a full-time job, they're available nights and weekends, um, and that means that they're available to take calls from other agents with offers and showings and things like that on nights and weekends, which makes it, diff- it a slightly more difficult to get things done, but not impossible. And, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. And and I'm, you know, I am not one to bash that. Everybody starts somewhere. And I have had people making really generous salaries um, or commissions still working a full-time job. So it really kind of depends on how they are with communication and what their drive is. Um, And then I've seen people with no job do way worse. So, um, and team wise, I've been a team since my third year in the business. Um, I love it because it's not all on me. Um, Like open houses, we split them up. We try and get a lot done during a weekend. Um, Whenever I'm out of town for some event or some class or, you know, anything like that, I always have somebody that can cover for me, and the same is reciprocated to them. So I've had people be sick, and I've gone and shown houses for them, wrote offers for them. So it's always a two-way street. So you have the benefit of having that team working together. Um, And when I say team, I mean a true team. So they're really there to help each other. Um, 
So I like them both. Me personally, to be able to to have somewhat of a life at the scale in which we do business, having a team, I think, is the only way to do it. Um, but we I, also I think, produce yeah, highly. I, 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 you, you've been practicing for a few years, and you've got it down, though. You do a very good job. So if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna work with a team, work with a team like Carrie uh, Carrie Brown, who uh, has it perfected. I would and, not say uh, that, but we're <laughs> always trying. We do have an awesome team, um, but we are also hiring. Uh, we are getting really busy, and I love to see people make money. So if you are looking to um, join a team or just even thinking about real estate at all, give me a call. Deciding which brokerage to work for. So now we've gone from consumer to agents. That's a big shift. That is a big so shift. I, I, you know, once again, I, I defer to where, where are you at in life? You know, or do you have a full-time uh, job? Are you still working 9 to 5 somewhere, Monday through Friday? You know, maybe that relates over to which brokerages will take you evenings and weekends. So I'm very fortunate. I, I started in the business uh, evenings and evenings and weekends. And so I aligned myself with a broker that was conducive to that, and they allowed me to grow in my, uh, my, my what I call my part-time career into a full-time career. And I have uh, made that available to agents that, that want to uh, align themselves with our firm, and uh, I've got a soft spot for it because I've, you know, I, I had another job when I was starting my career. Um, so, A, if a broker will allow you to do that, if you're in a position where you can't just quit your day job, uh, that's one way to look at it. And then what support are you looking for? What do they specialize in? Uh, we have some brokerages that specialize in uh, farm, agriculture, uh, rural properties. Um, and if that's what your interest is, maybe align yourself with that brokerage. Um, we have other brokerages that are uh, in our area that do just uh, in-town, uh, you know, typical uh, residential properties. Uh, uh, and if that's what your interest is, then, you know, uh, consider them. And then, yep, there's other firms that only do industrial and commercial properties. So, um, I, you know, whether it's a franchise or whether it's an independent, can also le- lead to your, uh, your decision and what they have to offer and support. Absolutely. Ultimately, you want to interview, um, understand your numbers. Where are you going to be? What are the additional benefits? Are there additional benefits? Is it, you know, just a standard pay-as-you-go? Um, what's the total cap? How long is it going to take me to get there? What are my realistic goals? Um, and then weigh them side by side. You also have to like the people you work with um, and make sure that someone's going to be there to answer your questions. I um in my office now, I've had several agents switch from a compete, competing broker, and um, I really do my best to make myself available and answer questions, and several do, and so do several on my team, um, whether they're on our team or not on our team. And what we've found is a, a lot of the agencies are like, well, I'll, I'll help you, but you're going to pay me. And my thought process is even though I'm not going to make a dime off of you, I'm still going to be there to help you because I remember being that agent starting out. And back when me and Broderick got in, they told us how not to get get sued. And that is about the extent of it. So, you know, it's really great to have somebody that will actually show you the ways and say, okay, this is how you need to market. This is how you need to do it. Yeah, there's there's more to just uh, to the business than just filling out forms. Uh, I don't care how many transactions uh, you are involved in if you're in your first year of real estate or if you're in your, your 25th year of real estate. It's a growing knowledge base and, you know, having those resources. Uh, yeah, it's good not to get sued, but it's also good to know how to do a transaction and and uh, inform your buyers and sellers and keep them, uh, keep them up to speed and break it down into consumer terms. Uh, don't use uh, trade trade acronyms, you know. CRMs or BPOs or things like that. That doesn't mean anything to, to most of the people in the public. So good family and good uh, culture and, and good support, I think, are priceless. Absolutely. And believe it or not, we are already out of time. I really want to thank you for being my co-host, Broderick. It has been a blast, and you're going to definitely have to do it again. Um, if they need to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? And they can reach me at 316-722-9393. 
And he is my favorite Wichita agent. And if you are looking to buy or sell, be sure and give us a call at 785-213-5188. Check out our website at TopekaHomeAdvisors.com. Thank you for listening to Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Preferred Advisors. 